live coding session. Code Buddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer to peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. Today we'll be continuing working on the Western Friend website. Western Friend is the official publication of Quakers in Pacific, North Pacific, and Intermountain yearly meetings. Uh, it's a large group of Quakers in the Western United States and Northern Mexico. And we are porting a website over from the Drupal CMS, which has been under development. Uh, the website has been under development for about, I think, five years. Uh, we're going to port it over to Wagtail CMS in Django. We just realized, uh, basically, with the timeline of migrating from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, uh, we took a, the opportunity to see what other options there were because our uh, migration was stalled a little bit by a few of the Drupal modules that we're using. And we're realizing we need uh, more fine-grained control, uh, or at least uh, visibility into how things are working uh, behind the scenes. And I'm not really familiar with PHP. Uh, I work more with Python. So we kind of looked at um, some community aspects and the needs of the website, and we realized that Python uh, Django and the Wagtail CMS were a good fit, so we've been working on this project to port it over for about one year. Uh, there's a lot of features on this website. We've got a magazine with a subscription model where uh, users, uh, subscribers get access to the most recent three issues of the magazine and everything else is in the archive. So here are the recent issues where subscribers have full access. And everything here, older than six months, it's published every other month. Um, going back to 1929 is publicly available. Now we have the Western Friend Archive, which actually me, goes uh, the online PDFs go back to 2013. But the Deep Archive, when it was called Friends Bolton, goes back to 1929. It's a pretty long-term publication. So what we're going to do today is work on this deep archive feature. Now, it's a separate feature from the Western Friend Archive in that these issues, um, they're PDFs that have and uh, online articles. Um, each issue has multiple articles in different categories. This format has. Um, well, it's the contemporary format. But these deep archives, when it was Friends Bolton, it was a more or less a newsletter instead of a magazine. And all of these archive issues have been scanned and uploaded to the Internet Archive. So in our project, we're going to treat them a little bit differently so that we can render them in an interactive viewer. So if I go to one of these articles, or one of these issues, that is, there's several articles here. Mm. And the articles have authors and a page number. Now this is uh, the page, there's a couple of different types of pages, we'll, we'll come to this in a, in a little bit, but essentially what it does is it renders this um, PDF from the Internet Archive and lets you turn the pages. And if you want, you can zoom it full screen in which opens it, the item on the Internet Archive, which are donation funded, it's a 501c3 nonprofit organization, it's really worth uh, they're providing a really important service, uh, including archiving so many materials and the internet, uh, as the name goes. Uh, they've been taking snapshots of websites since, I believe, the 90s. So you can see really old versions of Google or your favorite websites, as well as historic knowledge that's been shared and may have gone offline. And so these articles, and the Internet Archive also scanned all these documents for free for Western Friend. We uh, or Mary, the editor, took boxes of these old paper newsletters and the archives staff scanned them. I think it took a couple of months for them to turn it over, turn it around and have it fully digitized. Uh, but it's a really cool service. And I think they're even, let's see, maybe full text indexing and then it allows the book to be read aloud, things like that. 
and it's high quality scans. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. So, you know, they even have the old stains on the paper and stuff like that. And I think the optical character recognition hopefully can look through some of those stains and determine the words. I'm not sure that, you know, the, it's not gonna be a perfect translation, so to speak, or scan. But in any case, yeah, they're using, uh, there's probably a lot of information on their, the process they use and the technology. I think they sort of designed their own scanning uh, tech and it's dump, something you can build at home as well. In any case, let's uh, not go too much further into the Internet Archive side of things, just to acknowledge that that's where these materials are being hosted. And now we're going to create a model or an app in Wagtail. But first, I'll have a little bit of tea. So, We have this app called Magazine. Either I could continue working in the magazine or create a new app. Looking at how the website is organized, we have this magazine section which has which features the deep archive there. So it's a natural place for the Deep Archive code, at least, to live in the magazine app. Now, this magazine is doing a lot of work. It's one of the most um, feature-rich parts of our app. So we were just essentially be adding a couple hundred, maybe a hundred or 150 li more lines of code to this models file. I'm just trying to think of this is getting a little bit out of hand here. Maybe not. Uh, the other thing just worth considering. So the deep archive is its own namespace on the site. Which is not too hard. Uh, essentially, this would just be a wagtail page, like a, the magazine index page, for example. When I go here to the wagtail site and I go to magazine, uh, this is a wagtail page, meaning I can edit it in the wagtail rich uh, UI, the admin UI that is. Uh, add an intro text. publish those changes, when I view it live, what we have here are two things. We have a, the top half of the page has a title and the intro text. The lower half of the page is the logic to display the um, recent issues, so the subscription, subscriber only issues, as well as archive issues. And I think because these views, essentially this deep archive is a, um, more or less a block or a component on the magazine page. I think this is for the justification that it's gonna live in the same app, meaning, you know, keeping things organized, it'll be in the, the model will be defined in models.py, things like that, so it'll just be a big file. It's not too bad of a problem. Now it looks like uh, I've already got some changes in this file. Let me just see what happened here. I think What's gone, uh, going on is I enabled my linter. To uh, format on save. Or no, it's just telling me there's a lot of problems. Indeed, this is unused. <laughs> So I haven't been cleaning up my imports. All right, so this 
it's a good opportunity to take care of some of this lint as a first step. This is a strange one, unable to import Flat Picker. Flat Picker's uh, an app that's been installed in Django. So maybe I'm thinking the IntelliSense of the linter doesn't know how to traverse um, or how to find this this app. I will leave this line in place because I know that we're using this date picker input. I can check it out here. There's the import and the usage is gonna be down here. All right, let's see what else we've got. So we took a look at that. Then we've got Battleship Pilot. Okay. Well. This one clean. Line too long. This one's pretty strict, 84, it's greater than 79. And that's why I had disabled the E501, in fact. Pilento. Let me see if I can disable the flake eight. I'm not sure whether I should be using flake eight or pilent. To be honest. I'll do this in a comment. Hmm. Well, I don't mind the um, the line length rule per se. Just looks like it's happening a lot. What I'll do is I'll override it though. Config file, instead of ignoring. I'll put this, put this in a config file. What does the config file look like? Flygate.yaml? Like a talks to I nine. Keep seeing that. Mm, I'm not gonna use that right up off the bat. Looks like I just used off flake eight. So over here in the root directory. And then max line length, let's just say, I'm not super strict on that. I 
I don't want to fight the linter. I mean, I tried my hardest to avoid fighting tools. Just checking out these other. There's a lot of different Pi code linters and style enforcers. Pi lint. We're using Flake 8. You should pick up this Flake 8 file. Hey, what's up, Intropixie? Welcome to the chat. Intropixel says, what's the online subscription website going to be used for? Uh, well, it's a nonprofit organization based in Western United States. So they, one of the ways they get some of their funding is by uh, encouraging people to donate. And um, more or less, the subscription is a, a donation. It's essentially a way of supporting the, the organization and gets you a uh, subscriber gets full access to all of the articles from the most recent three issues and uh, an issue is published every two months so it's like six months of content uh, everybody can access the featured articles as kind of like um, you know just in uh, some of that really important content and then everything older than six months is just publicly accessible, publicly available, fully, all of the article, articles. And then again, going back to 1929, everything is publicly available as well. So yeah, it's just used for fundraising, uh, essentially just support this nonprofit. Wanting to disable this this line rule, I guess I could just uh, send the args. Use the args approach. This flake eight file should just work unless I'm I'm doing this wrong. I like this simplest, better than complex blog is really good. Flake eight, all right. Then you got some. Indra Pixel says, I'm working on learning Python. I work as an Oracle SQL developer slash report writer. Very cool. Uh, yeah, you should definitely check out Django. It'll teach very idiomatic Python. Um, it's compatible with Oracle. You can build some really great web applications with all the batteries included that you'll probably need to build your app. Let me see here, Django 3. Something happened, let's see, Django 3. I thought there were some headline features here. Well, basically, yeah, you might check out these these release notes for Django three, the latest um, series for Django. Django, <laughs> excuse me, supports twelve and higher. Um, but if you've got the choice and the chance, I highly recommend using checking out Postgres. Uh, it's free and open source database. It's been around. It's quite feature rich. Uh, 
and it has geospatial capabilities and a lot of good features. Hence Feature Ridge, I suppose. Yep. So Django will give you a, an easy way to scaffold um, any kind of web project, web-oriented project, database-driven application that you can think of, even real-time apps. Uh, it's got these, uh, it's called Django Channels, uh, and it'll enable basically, what is it called? Um, web sockets, real-time streaming data to and from a JavaScript client, or you can use other clients as well. And we're using the Wagtail CMS, which is a CMS built on top of Django. It's sort of like WordPress for Django. Intrapixel says, yes, you, if you know one flavor SQL language, I feel you can figure out the others quite easily. Sometimes there might be slightly different uh, slight syntax, you know, syntax differences, but the same fundamentals. Yeah, I agree with that. That's the nice thing about using a standardized language. Uh, for a few years, I was have been working, I still work with uh, uh, a JavaScript framework called Meteor.js. Meteor.js, and um, they adopted the Mongo D, uh, database, MongoDB database there. So it's a document-oriented database. And um, for better or for worse, I learned that as my sort of first delve, <laughs> first dive into database-driven web applications, like writing the code. Yeah, well, maybe this setup config is, is the way to go. This is. All right, well, this might be good. So at the end of the line, if I want to ignore an error, I can just say no QA on that line. Hmm. Intropixel, what kind of uh, projects are you wanting to build? What's uh, intriguing you about Python, basically? What's bringing you to the Python world? Yeah, I don't want to do this, uh, these line rules in a way that's you know, VS Code centric. I want to do it in a way that uh, it's more generic. So maybe if I rename this, setup.config. It'd be cool if I could, I could define it. PyProj. Ooh, I wonder if you can actually. actually. That Tommel. Pixel says, I have a background in C Sharp, so the transition to Python again has not been that bad with similarities. I'm still very new to Python. Yeah, and like any language, there's a lot to learn, and it's a big ecosystem. Make this line even longer to do the node QA. Uh, in any case, bunch of files in my I just want one that my linter will pick up <laughs> it's ID and linter will pick up let's rename it to set up CRG.
So are you wanting to build, uh, are you wanting to do data analysis or data visualization, for example, or build database oriented apps? It's a new line at the end of it. There we go. All right. Now we, let's see if we got rid of some errors. Now I wonder if I can drop this no QA at the end of this deal and Bob here. Yes, so the IDE does look for center.cfg, good. All right, what do we have here? Must be change or something. Uh, I think black reformatted that. I'm gonna start being more diligent about linting. This one I know is a mistake. Okay, something from Pilot. Cool, Intrapixel, are you interested in developing any open source projects? If you wanna sort of make your way into the Python ecosystem. So now we got some basic linting out of the way. Let's have a little bit of tea and get to coding. Cool. 30 minutes in and I just got my linter set up. What the heck? <laughs> well, that's the life of a developer, I suppose. Granted, I did a little bit of an intro. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna port over, and I'm not in a rush, I'm not in a big rush here. The data structure from Django, uh, Drupal, I'm gonna try to approximate it as closely as possible so our data import doesn't need too much mapping. So we've got two things, archive issue and archive article, which are their own content types. Let's start with the archive issue and check out the fields there. Yeah, I've got to run this security update. Keep doing it, forget to do that. Ah, manage fields is what I'm looking for. So we have the title, some Drupal and path metadata. We have a subscript, uh, description field. An internet archive uh, identifier, WF. Volume, okay. I'm gonna see if there's actually some data there. To an archive issue. W volume. By the way, this is that, I think I already demoed this, but the page turner, sort of working. <laughs> page four. Page. Well, two and three are the same page, so it is working actually. One is the front, four is the back. Yeah, good to go. Now, some of these, I think one of the confusing things we had going on is some of these just start on like page
page one, PDF page one, but some of them I think have a table of contents that's not numbered as a page. So like the page numbering from the table of contents and the PDF page numbering are off by one or more. So we're gonna have a little bit of an improvement, I believe, to that. So we'll take these fields, I'll define this new model. Just ignoring that. So we'll start with an archive issue. And imports from page, wagtail page model. And we have a title from the wagtail page. And I don't even think we're using the description much. Do a quick audit and see if we're using it at all. I don't know how I would do that. Maybe a later issue. Well, so there's a lot of these issues. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, it just looks like we're not using it at all. I'll define it without. This is really cool. This was one of the biggest features here on this site. It, was, it took us like a few months at least. To, not only did the archive uh, take you know months to scan it but just to get the infrastructure in place import the data it was a big accomplishment so go back to manage fields I'm gonna skip the description field in a way it could be treated as a primary key at least it should be indexed let me think here yeah it's not too that's something we really need to optimize right now. I wonder what the TB index does. Actually, and we should index it. I guess it'll be used to reference, to cross reference articles and issues. Which is why I'm also sort of thinking it should, could be a primary key. Let's go ahead and index it. max length, it doesn't really matter.
we're good to go there. We got the inner archive identifier. This is also a character field. are make sure that this is relevant Hey, what's up, level two? How you doing? I'm pretty good here. Uh, finished off that last feature of the website I was working on, the memorial minutes. And now we're working on the deep archive, which is linking um, these old PDF um, issues to the Western Front website. A deep archive feature. Basically, it looks like this. It's got a, a title, a table of contents with the article. To, uh, so it's an issue, magazine issue, with a bunch of articles. And then it's actually, you can browse it online on the Internet Archive. So it like lets you click the pages, or if I want to go to this particular article, you can click the link here, or I can go to that poem, and it'll turn the page for you. So, and all the content is loaded dynamically from the Internet Archive, you can see over here, which is also pretty awesome. I'm just going to close this dialog, because I've already seen it once. Internet Archive, archive.org. Really cool. Nonprofit library of millions of free books, movies, software, music, websites, and more. Some interesting stuff here. What have you been up to, level two? Are you so are you still working on your uh, Twitch bot? Okay, it looks like we got the required fields here. I'm going to talk to Mary about dropping this description field for not using it. And maybe we could, um, let me think here. Well, we might be able to drop this WF volume. I'm not sure how that's used or why we added it. Let's migrate these changes in. Dang it. No, no, I'm good. Archive issue. It's an issue, magazine issue. Blogger. Um, oh, yeah, I get confused, I think. Level 2 says, yeah, I've been working on my Twitch extension. Been finished uh, with that the bot. Might expand it since Streamlab chatbot doesn't seem to work for me. I've been working on my few games. Cool. I think, yeah, I've got Streamlabs enabled here. Uh, I haven't done much uh, to configure it, but yeah, if you have any tips on how to use Streamlabs uh, to build community, that'd be a, that'd be something I'd be interested in learning about. All right, so let's now check out the content type for the archive article. So just like the magazine, it has issues that consist of articles. So there's two two entities we have to define here. Here's the archive article. I will go to manage fields. All right, so each article has a title, which we get that for free from the Wagtail page model. It also has the arc, uh, Internet Archive identifier because this is our kind of foreign key to, to relate the archive 
um, issues with articles. So that's why we need to index those fields, at least on the lookup end of things. Uh, so I think when you render an archive issue, it's going to query the archive articles for the ones that match the identifier. So at the very least, this collection, this column needs, this table column needs to be indexed. And here's the tricky bit. We have this starting page number. That's what the JavaScript uses to actually do the page turner, and it's displayed in the table of contents. But I think we've noticed, uh, I don't have a specific example of this, but uh, again, the table of contents is in the in some issues, and it's not necessarily counted as a page. So we had uh, had to go through a bunch of these and adjust the page number. So I'm going to add two fields here for the page number. This authors is a going to be a foreign key relationship, the same way we did the magazine articles. So I'll just copy that line of code. Oh, uh, here we go. So we got PDF. And uh, starting page number and PDF starting page. So we did already define these as two. And then, and the Drupal side of things, we did this entity re relationship, entity reference, which we should probably do in uh, Wagtail, to be honest. We should uh, have a proper foreign key. So I'm just trying to think how that data would look, how we would migrate it. And if we have a proper foreign key, then we don't need to use this Internet Archive identifier. So I think on this um, Archive article, I'm not going to keep the Internet Archive identifier string. It's going to be a little bit lossy, but when I export the data from from Drupal, I'm going to create an import script that's going to iterate over all these articles, and it'll at that point I can look up the um, archive issue with the identifier, and really the identifier is linked to the issue and not these articles on Internet Archive. Cool. Uh, level two, um, you said you've got a music game. Is that uh, ha have you been publishing that game? Uh, is there a a demo I think you showed me on uh, on Heroku or something. Do you have a running, a live instance of that? <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, let's go ahead and start this data model. I just had to think it through a little bit. And hopefully not paint myself into a corner or lose data. That would be hard to retrieve. I think we'll be okay with this. We're losing a couple fields here. Uh, some sort of housekeeping while we're doing this m migration. So this is inheriting from the Wagtail page model. Going to get the title for free. Going to skip the archive identifier. I'm going to be explicit about this. Table of contents page number is different than the PDF page number. And these should be integers, yes. Oops. Yeah, because they're never be a fractional or string is not necessary either. Uh, this in, this will give us a date uh, integer widget, so the proper widget, not date picker, but. That way we understand. It's for the table of contents. Just being careful to read through the inline doc so I get more familiar. 
with uh, Django and Wagtail code in general. Help text, that's what I was thinking about. PDF page number. I'm going to put these right next to each other. And this will be, hey, what the heck? Verbose name. Essentially, this is the same, same definition. Long pages, but these are help text. Right. All right, cool. So, level two says, Think you might have me confused. I do a check game I run on Twitch on different account. I've been working up on it for three years like this month got a streaming pc set up boom that's awesome that now you can start live streaming these code sessions i did say i was um planning on doing a music game which is why uh level two started stopping by this stream okay cool and i haven't been uh working on the music one too much lately level two but I have some ideas. If you want to do a, a brief interlude on this, on the music game, I'll run this migration and I'll try to try to describe the kind of UI. And uh, that way, if you want to start cogitating on it or whatever, uh, start thinking about how th how this might be possible, uh, then we might be able to put our heads together and and make a pretty interesting um, interface for sort of uh, more or less sequencing these sounds. Let me just get these couple more fields in here. Make this migration, run the migration. That'll be a brief stopping point. And I'll kind of, I'll open up Inkscape maybe and uh, sort of sketch this out. This idea I've been kicking around, but I haven't really ever put it on paper. All right, so I skipped the authors field. <clears throat> this is the foreign key that I'm gonna copy. Oh, by the way, I want to commit these. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, was that? Yes, yeah, singular. Good, good. I don't want to make my model names plural. Now, this one I can. Oh, actually, I don't even have to change my file or anything like that. It's just right here in the same file. In the magazine. Oh. It's an orderable. Yeah, because there can be multiple authors here. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna have to just copy and paste a bunch of code. I think then you just define. I think this is all I would need more or less. <laughs> Because I believe if I say ar archive issue, uh, archive article author, and it's a little bit different. Then you have this parental key to archive article. Whoa, if I could spell correctly. Boing. And, 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 and. That's going to complain because the page model will already have that. Dang it. Yeah, 
because I'm, uh, shoot. Yeah, uh, I did this to be pretty generic. Uh, the, so there's three types of entities that can really be articles, uh, authors here, at least two, there's people can author these articles and then organizations can author some of the articles and there's no way I'll be able to just scan through these whole, this whole collection. I mean, just uh, this episode, episode, this issue is just all people, but I don't know if I can do a spot check here. Go back, left click, left click. Oh, it was going back, but when you interact with the um, PF browser, it's actually changing up the URL or something. So the page state is changing the back history. Well, let me just, I don't even know what issue I was in. Dang it, this is, ah, Angelina Conti, I know her. And Mary Klein, who's the current editor of Western Friend. Very nice. But yeah, these are all people. So there's two things. So I, I did this generic uh, foreign key to Wagtail core page because that allows us to select from the three entities. Entity types under our contacts models. There's meetings and people primarily who can publish and there's also organizations. Well, let me just see if it complains. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. If this author's related name is uh, taken, then I'll just maybe say, I'll have to figure it out, but uh, just have to use something different. Hmm. Yeah, and so basically you just need this orderable model and you define your reverse relationship and you, oh yeah, and I can point it out here is where you limit the um, types of pages. But your foreign key can only be linked to one particular um, database table, more or less. So the Wagtail core page is the, the parent database table for these three types of entities because they all inherit from that. I'd be in the same situation if I had to find a parent page like contact and an inherited person meeting an organization from the contact um, collection or table. I'm still thinking in terms of uh, MongoDB a little bit. I'll just double check, but I believe now the, if I look at the magazine article, there's no author field because it's an orderable. You just use an inline panel to allow interact the user to interact with that orderable so also this will have some impact on the migration the data migration so let's go to archive article i need to define these content panels anyway Pools. content panels plus Oops, a list of panels. I'm gonna do a little bit more copy and pasty. So field panels, basically. I like this multi-field panel. Because these two fields are related.
these panels actually go? a little bit more careful here. Level 2 says, I know you'd be having trouble with Inkscape, and Inkscape is kind of old program to be truthful. Why don't you look into Gravit Designer? It's similar to Inkscape, but up to date, and you can use it on their site without downloading it locally, but you can also download it too. All right, is it open source? I was I sort of trying to stick with that, but let me check it out. G-R-A-V-R-T-D-S-I-G-N-E-R. Hmm, online vector graphics, download pricing, pro, accept cookies, yeah, I kind of bounce off of those types of things. Looks nice though from first glance. All right, I can think about it. Um, there's also, yeah, in any case, uh, let me just do this real quick. So I want this inline panel. And I want this multi-field panel, actually, so let's do this. Copy these, but bring it down to the archive article. And this, and this. Go here, and then Make my commits a little bit cleaner. I'll run this migration and commit this. This is why it's going to collide. Well, this actually might work. This relating name just here, that might be sufficient because it's pointing to a different. Yeah, let's try it out. Uh, right, right, because the article. Archive article is pointing to the archive article collection, and uh, from the archive article, you have an author's help, uh, helper, more or less, that lets you go across that foreign key in a meaningful way, semantic way. Now, coming back to the author, uh, inheriting from Wagtail page so that we can allow persons, meetings, and organizations to author these. And the thing is, from the, say, a person, we want to say, give us the archive articles they've authored. That's all. The related name needs to be unique, so it will point to the right collection. I think this is going to be good to go. And I will put back in the panels in just a moment. And let me double check in here. So, we've got the author there. Then I need this archive. Yeah. Related archive issue, so, and I'll just yeah, call it archive issue article, 
is a foreign key to an archive issue because it's a one uh, many to one many articles in one issue and for that I think I put in a string now I'm not using the orderable here. Oh, really? I could be. Mm, it started to get deeply nested, though. But frankly, it would be nice to be able to edit this. You create an archive issue, you enter all the data at one place. So actually, the cluster cluster model could be an improvement here. Let me just get a scratch pad real quick. Well, I just want to control T. No, just give me a new file. I just want to put this here. So yeah, if we Migrating this. First thing I need to verify is that Wagtail is going to let me do this nested stuff. This is an experiment, though. So it's a Wagtail inline model, inline panel, which lets you put one model in side of another one in the editing form. <clears throat> This panel allows for the creation of a cluster of related objects over a, uh, over a join to a separate model, such as a list of related links or slides to an image carousel. This is a powerful but complex feature, which will take some space to cover. So then they did it in this model clusters. And I think basically it boils down to, you have an inline panel that renders these orderable, orderable models, models that inherit from orderable. Hmm. They're not even, oh, here, just right here, related link, which is this. I don't know why they're using abstract class. That's a little bit extra moving parts, in my opinion. But you have parental key relationship, which is natural when you have an, uh, Sorry, I'm just spacing off to see if I should use this in the uh, our main magazine, but I don't believe so. You have uh, essentially an issue which has articles, and those articles are children of the issue. The main difference with the archive issues and articles from the magazine issues and articles is the magazine articles are more complicated. There's more fields and logic to them. Whereas these archive issues, the Articles are never displayed in their own template or anything. They're just used to generate a table of contents, which allows you to click and open the, the page. So really, this is, a, I think, going to be a great improvement to the way we manage these. OK, so that being said, we do have this foreign key. We'll see how that is handled. So at this point, I think I can migrate this in. So we've got an archive article as TOC, and I'm going to use a parental key here and this actually should then inherit from orderable boom yeah there we go because as you can see here the one with the parental key pointing to the parent content type is an orderable and what that does is lets wagtail uh, display it inline in an inline panel and then you can change the order of those uh, related items and then as well as have fields on them and things like that. So we'll see how that works with the inline panel, if it'll actually display, for example, the archive article author, I'm a little bit worried that that's not gonna work, which is also an orderable. So we have nested orderables. Hmm, maybe I'm asking for too much here. 
Let's give it a try though. Let's do this one at a time though. I'll get my scratch pad back up and just, uh, so let me get this layered link. So if you're in the same, oh no, sorry. If you're in the same model, you, or just in general, you can declare it with a string. That's what I was curious about. Put this over my scratch bed. <clears throat> this is a magazine. Magazine dot. Yes, an archive issue as a child. Um, archive. Oh, excuse me, an archive article as a child of an archive issue. wonder if I should models protect here. No, because I believe you'll be deleting it all from the same page. You'll delete the... Hmm. All right. You'll delete essentially the archive issue and then everything is related there. Level two, have you been working with that um, Gravit designer? What do you, what's your experience with it? What do you, what do you, what draws you to it? Related name. So when I have an archive issue, I can get the archive articles by that foreign key sort of semantic bridge. <laughs> I don't know of a better way of saying it, the related name. But it actually becomes a property on your model instance. That's pretty convenient. Alright. Mm, right. And then I've got parental key. I think I just imported that also from the top level. Let's see. Yeah. It's into my main namespace from the Wagtail model, actually model cluster fields, which is a Wagtail extension. Now I think we're good to go. I've got a couple things in Scratchpad. I hope I don't forget what I'm doing with those. This is growing quite long. Yes, now I do need panels here. Essentially, so. Well, they're using the page. No, 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 no. Let's see. They're just using panels here, it's just an empty list. in a minute.
Now on an inline panel on the archive issue, that's going to display this related Now this archive issue is the page that's going to be rendering everything out. So then I will inherit from the, or I'll display the wagtail default page panels plus a list of um, probably the archive issue metadata first. So field panel for the Internet Archive Identifier and a field panel for the and then an inline panel. How do these work? Relation name is this. I guess the label's fine here. Or heading. Interesting. Let's see if this works. So the first thing I actually have to add it to someplace on the site. For right now, I'm just going to allow these to be added underneath the home page temporarily, just so I can experiment with it. I'll add a proper um, subsection in the. Where is it? So I had a navigation menu here for magazine. <laughs> I'll add that. Yeah. And it goes back to what I'm doing. Home. Just a temporary one. If I go to the home page you now, I can add a magazine archive issue, which only has a title. So there we go. First prop. Oh, content panels. That's, ah, oh, yeah, it's a subtle difference, but on a page model, it's, you use content panels, but on an orderable model, you just use panels. Subtle. There we go. Got that, got that. And then archive articles. Oh, yes. 
a little bit ugly, but all right. Too bad. Good. Now we're going to go one step further and hope that this nested orderable linking to article archive article authors will work properly. <laughs> I don't know if I'm asking too much. Otherwise, I don't know how to handle this. All right. So I guess I'll just. <laughs> Have to open a support request. So we need this model now, archive article author. And if I save it, it'll lint for me. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Parental key must point to a subclass of a clusterable model. Oh, yes. I didn't read carefully enough. Well, hey, page. Just documentation out of date that happens a lot. Just says page when I said print OK demo or whatever the Parental key is. I'm asking too much, apparently. Like, well, just, 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 just.
so multi inheritance somehow using this as the base class and then I don't know if it's mixing in or what's going on there. I'm not really that fluent in Python, Django Wagtail type stuff. But let's see if this will work. The first thing is for archive article, page numbers, and then authors. Okay, all right, please work. If I refresh here, add, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, it works. Um, except it's not using the correct panel. Mm, this is close though. This is really close, but yeah, we, we can't, uh, just have a drop down list of all the content. This is not gonna, that's not gonna be a good user experience. And why is it creating three instances? It's a little bit confusing. Uh, maybe the, the page chooser panel is the one, is this. Uh, if I go to awesome wagtail. And wagtail, GitHub to open a bug about this documentation. They need to update it to show cluster. Oh, no, no, it's probably correct because the page is a clusterable model. Never mind. If I go to widgets, Wagtail instance selector a foreign key widget to create and select related items similar to a raw ID fields. Hmm. Wagtail generic chooser provides base classes for building chooser pop-ups from widgets in a Wagtail admin. Matching look and feel of Wagtail's built-in choosers for pages. Well, this might be a good one. The problem is that the authors won't exist uh, when we're editing this thing. So that's uh, that's got to be addressed. So whatever the widget is needs to let you uh, edit one. So what's up, level two? All right, level two says the uh, graphic designer is newer and stylish with a nicer and friendlier GUI for others to use. And uh, level two is going into lurk mode. All right, cool. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for lurking. <laughs> I hope this is going to work out. I remember having found a widget like this. How do we Uh, here we go. 
the problem here is authors have first and last name, and we don't know if we're creating an author and um, hmm. Well, I think if we just have a rule, you have to create authors first. Mm. Or a page chooser panel. Page chooser panel. Why are we not using that? I am using that, damn it. I thought that gives you a popover. <clears throat> Yeah, because I think this is kind of a bug. If I add magazine issue. If I add an article and I go to the authors, I have a page chooser widget here. So let me look at the magazine article. Try this, this is random, but uh, mm. Well, it didn't. I did that. Hmm. Ah, okay.
bad doo doo. Oh, well, yes. This would be a different Cold one to ask for support on Stack Overflow. I think I would have to have them reproduce the issue. I'm just trying to make it easy for our content managers to edit these. And having nested um, orderable seems like a good start. So let's hop back here and it actually creates a super user. Just gonna create a home page. I'll delete this page. Delete. Yep. Add a home page. That should be our only root page. I'll have to clean that up later. Anymore. I'll close a few of these. Page chooser panel. We'll come back to these. Ooh, look at this. Nice. Setting sites, I need to create a new default site now. Localhost, I don't have a scaffold for this whole dealie, so root page, welcome.
actually No, I think this is correct. Never mind. And yeah, for testing purposes, we're allowed to do this. Archive articles. So, right. Right. so that's good. The migration went through. That's a good sign. But it's got the wrong widget. Well, then, wrong widget. So, archive article block here has archive, uh, excuse me, article, author, archive, article, author. <laughs> and it's putting in three, it's just not behaving quite as I would expect the page chooser panel to behave. I mean, this is a bug. Why did it fix it? Food events page. I can archive our issues. So let's find the events page. Ah, but they define a form. It's a page though.
wonder if I should be inheriting from model's model. It's the only main difference I see here. Although I don't think this is the problem. Article author, the problem is it's not getting into the page chooser panel. It's not rendering correctly. I'm wondering if this like to autocomplete might be just worth trying here. As a way forward, I'm a little bit baffled. Almost two hours and this is a pretty interesting challenge. This would actually let us Really, I need to be able to choose or create an author. But authors have potentially multiple fields, so this is not true. Damn. Hmm. I guess the constraint would be that the author has to exist first. sort of a trade-off. Out of tea. Yeah, one moment, let me adjust my seat. This was re, uh, merged recently. So if we look at the master branch change log. Two point eight. Ah, oh, in development. Okay. So it looks like this is gonna work in a little bit. I don't know what the timeline is for 2.8 release. <laughs> Why this is merging the master branch is also a little bit baffling. Anyway, 
I guess they, they haven't created the 2.8 tag. Okay, so November 6th, and this got merged. Oh, it's gonna be in 2.8. All right, so I think I'm gonna leave the code as it is. Um, I'll come back to that. I'll, I'm in a branch, so I'm safe. It's been like two hours, I'm getting kind of tired. Let me take a quick break. I'll make a little bit more tea. And we'll work on the front end a little bit just to get something meaningful happening. But uh, I'll probably be live streaming this tomorrow too so we can continue where we leave off today. All right, thanks for hanging out and I'll be right back.
All right. Thanks for sticking around. Level two still in lurk mode. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to just review this pull request one more time to make sure that they have a test case for a page chooser panel or something similar. Page chooser panel is what I'm planning on using until I figure out uh, what the end user flow should be. But page chooser panel is a default wagtail panel. And it gives you that nice modal dialogue where you pick an existing page. So we'll have to, uh, the constraint being, you have to create the authors before you can add archive issues. All the authors all have to exist, but after that, everything else is in one flow. Because it's just too complicated allowing multiple types of authors and having the ability to create those in. I, I think it's asking too much, really. So that's it. If the, if the test case here in this pull request, I'll check in a minute, um, covers a page chooser panel. I'm just going to comment out this code uh, where we link the author, I'll, and I'll roll back those um, those migrations, and I'll I'll mess with that later, because this part is this author part is not necessary for me to work on the front end. It's just a nice addition. It will be essential uh, to the display of archive issues going forward, and we want to, we just want to have this link and give attribution to the authors. So that's that is a requirement, and if the test doesn't cover the page, um, choose your panel, then I'll just open an issue and say, please, uh, please add a, a test coverage for this. Now, that way I'll get notified. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. After this, we'll be able to spend just a little bit of time on flushing out the front end template and possibly uh, at least rendering in the iframe, the archive article. So it was merged in with this pull request, and I think I've got too many tabs open. But now I know I can close some of them. I mean, I just like this awesome wag There's some cool stuff here. So this got closed. It actually got f fixed here. It's not covering the page, choose your panel. Either in our architecture, we would have to modify the, hmm, no, I think, modify the um, author to be a single person and have the person model inherit from orderable. So essentially what we've got is an event page that displays speakers and those speakers display awards. That's what this hierarchy is. And the event page speaker award, which is our equivalent of magazine, uh, so archive issue article author, is just displaying some fields and that <clears throat> is not displaying a page chooser panel. It's a field panel. Two field panels, in fact. Okay. So. How do I keep losing track of this? Okay, I'm going to close these dang things for a minute. So it's merged here. Right? Closing this one out. I'm going to put a reference to this.
There's even a uh, no, 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 this is not a list. Never mind, sorry. They're kind of syntax error. All right, so let's just do this.
cross reference and everything. Cool, that'd be nice. 2.8. What's going on here? Django 3 support. Excellent. Start rolling out with Django 3. Removes four for Django 2. Ooh, this is big. 2.0 or 2.x? 2.0. Must be. Combine Flake 8 configurations. Oh, okay, so they're using Flake 8. Good sign. I can stick with that. Hmm. They've been doing a lot of uh, usability enhancements. I think this is part of that series. So it's Cloudflare layer stuff, okay, I don't know. Yeah, this is, the, this is interesting. That I came to this right as they're developing it, so maybe it's good timing. Hopefully, that they'll extend the test coverage. Okay, got a little. I got one bag of tea. Didn't brew a whole nother pot. I'm gonna go wrap this up pretty shortly. But what we can test? Oops, sorry to bump the mic. With maybe about 15 minutes left. I don't want to go too long. It's two and a half hours already. <clears throat> it's writing its templates. So roll back these migrations or un let's see how we're gonna do this. So we've got the archive issue. Delete this migration. <clears throat> Comment out the code. I'm done. Down here. So, don't say that. Actually, I can probably just leave it in there. If I don't introduce any other fields. Yeah, why not? It basically, uh, it's working. Like, it's going the level I would want it to. It's just the widget's not working in the form. So that's not a big deal. All right, take that back. Let's just leave the code in there and start working on the front end template. So we'll need to create some more dummy content so that we have some authors. I haven't, we've only got two pages here. Particularly, the nice thing about the page chooser panel, it, narrows down your options. So what we will need, really nothing actually, to be honest, just delete these other two. Let's just say one and one. This probably should be optional. Now this inner archive identifier is a requirement. So let's just grab one here and <clears throat> paste it in there. This will be cool. This is how we're gonna link the iframe, render it in, and the title. Western Frank's friend, Bulletin. Uh, but we probably should try the JavaScript. So let's actually set the PDF page to two or three. It doesn't matter, but uh, that should work. Oh, I just have to remember it's welcome. It's the name of the author. That shouldn't be too confusing, should it? Well, heck, let's add a contact. Let's add Mary Klein. So we're gonna add contact, we're gonna add people, 
We need a person's index page. Why didn't, doesn't let me create it there? Mm, probably I don't have the whole content hierarchy set up. So in order to do this, we need welcome. We need a child of welcome to be community page. And publish that. Something. Just put a heading there. Underneath community, we want person index page. This is our sort of our vanilla folder, so to speak, in our filing cabinet to all the people. Then I will add a person. Mary Klein. Because she's actually an author. Now, if I go back to the welcome page and add a child page, which is going to be an archive issue, just remember not to commit that. Uh, the change to the home page. And we'll just say, well, one. Archive auth, or so the table content is page one, page three for the PDF page, so it'll actually flip it. And we will add Mary Klein, delete these two. So that was like a half-baked solution. Like, <laughs> it worked, it renders three uh, instances by default. And it's like they got, the developer got it done, but didn't really polish it. And didn't, I mean, why not just, Yeah, just render one instance or something. It's kind of silly. Oh, now I can't even delete that. What the heck? <laughs> it's kind of janky, to be honest. All right, so I'm not in Wagtail's sweet spot here. Oh, goodness. Oh. And I messed it up. All right, now we'll save it or publish that change. Yeah, it's not, it's just like a half baked thing. Well, anyways. Whew. Now, let's view it live and see the yellow text of a template, template list page. All right, so just going to extend our base. <laughs> and we will just display the page title in the block content. refreshing it and see if I get an error about the block. Okay, no errors. What if I do this? Sometimes I get mixed up. My memory's not so great. Here we go. We got actually the thing working. Now, the beautiful part. And save that. I mean, it refreshes. So now we have, whoops, wrong thing. I did a tab. Instead of refreshing, ooh, well. Problem is these friends bolts and issues don't really have clean titles. But all right, that aside, let's just check out this inner archive iframe text. Oh, we need to. Display the TOC. This table works, but it's not super exciting. But it's really tabular content. Okay. Okay.
Good stuff. I really just appreciate the uh, Wagtail core team and the Wagtail community even. Uh, this and the previous live stream have evidenced the rapid response times um, for these kind of support requests or uh, in a way enhancement requests in that case. But uh, last time I opened a Stack Overflow um, question, I got an answer within five minutes that basically put me on the right path to solving the problem at hand although it didn't really answer the question directly in detail, uh, but it got me in a roundabout way to a solution. So anyway, I'm not complaining there. It worked out pretty good. So, okay, back to the game here. Let's just do a list because it's clean and simple. And I'll worry about aesthetics a little bit later. So we're gonna, we're gonna have a UL. So then we're gonna iterate over these um, Four. I'm sorry. Item in. I don't know. This is in. Uh, this is. Uh, what is this? Articles. Article in. Right. Oh, this will be a nested. Model because clearly it slipped to my mind. No. If I edit this page, we do have some archive articles. We have ooh, two of them. It's adding three every time. It's just so confusing. Yes, yeah, so we have one archive article, so we're good to go with one author. Good. Publish that. So here's the problem. I don't page. It's a page specific field. So the generic page model has some fields, but when you have a subclass and you want to access a specific field of that subclass, then you have to use the page.specific prefix. It's kind of a little bit annoying. I might actually just put it by with page. That's probably the problem. Let's take a look. Deferring related manager object. Oh, ooh. oh yeah, okay, okay, this is an interesting one. So let's just try it with just page dot, probably don't have to use this specific infix, but this is a deferring related manager. I think it's basically a query set. So I need to, it's not gonna fetch things until I tell it to, because it's deferred. I think I can just say page, ah. Oh. Archive articles dot all, maybe. There we go. There we go. And then uh, we'll just use article actually instead of to get this string represented, string representation of that article. So in which case it says uh, an object, an archive article object, which is true. All right, we're good. We're good. I didn't define a string representation of it, and it doesn't know really what to use by default here because it doesn't, it's not a page, doesn't have a title, or is it a page? No, it's not. Yeah, no problem. So let's just define a string representation for the heck of it, anyway. That's the problem, though. I 
I don't have a field for that. I don't have the title field. Dilly. All right. So yeah, articles have to have titles. Cool, no worries there. So let's edit this page and have to add the panel. Watch this magic. That's the weird thing. Uh, If I would inherit it from Wagtail page here would be good. And it'd have some other stuff, that's good. I just don't know if I should have collisions. I don't know if we need the whole, uh, everything. Hey, see you later level two. I just saw your message, sorry about that. If you've already left. Um, just put it in Discord and Read over it, what you want to do with the game. I have some ideas on my music games from old designs I made in my, that I have in mind. All right, cool, sounds good. I hope you're um, still in chat and that we're able to at least uh, collaborate on this music uh, user interface soon, uh, maybe tomorrow. I don't know what, I will be trying to stream tomorrow though, so uh, it depends on how far I get with this. In any case, level two, if you're still there, thanks for hanging out and have a great day. Okay, so I don't think I'm going to uh, inherit this whole wagtail page model. I've made it a rule to kind of, if, if it's kind of walks like a page and talks like a page and quacks like a page, so to speak, then just inherit from wagtail page. But I think I might have an exception here and define the, the title here. Um, yeah, because pages have revisions and all that. And again, these uh, art, archive articles are really just they're mainly used to generate this table of contents, so they're pretty light pages, if anything. Comma after that. And I, yeah. So now, basically, the cool part, you know, ignoring these things, but now if I refresh the page, this form will have changed if I did everything correctly. There we are, and we have a default title, even. Very cool. I'll just leave it in the default title. I'm not gonna get too fancy right now. But tell you days. Come on, don't be so helpful. All right, so there we go. Now if I view it live, which, well, got too many tabs open. And the default title, because our string method is returning self-title. That's about it. Which is another nice thing that, that Wagtail does among other many, many other things with the Wagtail page model. But yeah, let's keep it simple. Good stuff. I wonder if I just F string. So let's then we got this list table of contents starting to form to take shape. And push this. Da, da, da. No, no, I, 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 I. Oh, 
Oh yeah, then just... Here's the iframe bit. What we need is this magic URL. This is the place we should interpolate the issue number or the item number. Sorry. Uh, so that field is called. Just want to get this correct. Here, archive identifier. Let's go ahead and put this on a new line so it's a little bit more easier to read. And it lends it for me. Well, thank you, Linter. I guess that's good. We refresh it. What do we got? Oh, yeah. Uh, default iframe behavior is not displaying full width. So I think we have a CSS rule here to Yeah, and that's where we get this jankiness with the aspect ratio. But we couldn't figure out a clean way of doing this. Let's see if the Internet Archive has some guidance. Perhaps if I go on the Internet Archive site, Tab. They have an embedding instruction. Alyssa Nelson. Oh, okay. This is Alyssa Nelson. <laughs> issue. Sorry. Oh, I'm not my docs in need of one, but uh, that's all in the Internet Archive already. So uh, interesting. We should probably have stripped that off there. Mailing list. Mailing label. Uh, I want that embed code. He's under share this item. More or less, I need this iframe code. So let's do that. Oh, this is nice. Actually, pretty clean. And do we want this field again? Let's see how this looks. I wonder, oh, this is tricky. Let's 
This should work though. Let me just think about this for a second. Let me see what, what, it, what it generated. Should this work? It's because the iframe source, this is weird. If I just cut this without cutting the tags, it's like. Is it null? It shouldn't be null. Internet archive identifier. Oh, dude. <laughs> I just keep forgetting. I use page dot. That's all. Now we're good to go. Okay, uh, and I'll not fight the width uh, for the time being. You know, it's just going to be is what it is, basically. Because hmm. I don't think you can do one hundred percent, unfortunately. Oh, you can. Oh well, heck, yeah, that's good. And I'll leave the three eighty four height. Let's make it a little bit bigger than 500. Which works good in this case. And you can just page through it. Very nice, very nice. All right, I like it, I like it. Um, the only other thing then is to add this little bit of JavaScript. Oops. And then here we just in block. I know. All right. And I believe. Uh, whoops! If I hop over here, um, let me think here. Where did I embed this script? I should be able to find it. Got two footers and <laughs> Django or Drupal just is a mess of divs and stuff. Good, 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 good grief. All right, I've got to find this JavaScript. I don't think it's in a separate file. It's been a while since I've even messed with this. I think this is a page template. No.
Hmm. How do we even locate this script? All right, let's peruse the back end, I think. Structure pages. And look at archive. Look for archive. Deep archive. Somehow on the archive issue, I've embedded some JavaScript and you can see how, well, one, I haven't written the code in a long time, and two, well, I guess things are a little bit opaque. Oh, wait, what's this? Here we go. Edit the view. Okay, there we are. I defined it as a view and then embedded the JavaScript as a custom field. Perhaps. So either it's in one of these fields. Really, it's somewhere at the row, it's embedded. Because you can click anywhere on the row. Right, let me just double check it one more time. Magazine, deep issue, deep archive. So I can click there, I can click here. I can probably even click here. Did this panel, oh, it's a little bit nested. Your page turn. Well, let's just dig in a little bit. Edit the block. Yeah, here we go. So I can just grab an article and put the data attribute there.
data pedia and then it'll be A little bit inconsistent, but okay. All right, you don't include the data attribute, just a PDF page number. All right, so you, in that table row, you find the page number, which is actually the, is the table row, which is strange. for the reminder, even in Abstentia. All right. So, go ahead. Refresh this page with the console open, or debugger should automatically open that. Uh, and click. So we didn't get that first, so let's check first things. jQuery is not defined. So it's dollar sign, because I believe it's part of the framework. Or I can probably do this with vanilla JS. Let's just go one step at a time. Where's the dollar sign in the European keyboard? Good grief. <clears throat> so there we go. And jQuery is not defined, dollar is not defined, so yes. All we can do is this function. Debug it step by step. All right, it's not it's not screaming at me. That's good step. Oh, that's not actually a good step because it means it's not even calling it. <clears throat> Subtle, subtle, but makes sense. Let's go ahead and just try to do some vanilla JS. 
I'm not opposed to jQuery. I think it's a good thing. It's been around a while, makes things pretty consistent. But let's go ahead and uh, take the opportunity to learn the web platform. <clears throat> Uh, and I don't want to log this. I actually wanted to see what this is. This dot data. Let's just go ahead and do that. And, uh, in this case, the debugger is not going to be as useful. Let me close a little bit of the tabs here. Window. Okay. <clears throat> so on click pass self in. Shadow this, or I have a look at this now. I don't want the well, yeah, I don't want the window necessarily. If I can just ooh. There we go. Now, thank you. Oh, I, uh, well, I was, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Took away two votes. That's strange. element data set all right this is cool data set dot PDF page number ooh I don't like that though oh it's gonna automatically or did the camel case? <laughs> of course. I'm gonna take the debugger out. and page page up you do PDF page number we're good to go this so page number is actually yes I really think that zero based indexing is an error or mistake uh, from a human design standpoint, designing for humans, not computers. I think zero based indexing is an example of uh, the implementation, like of the way the computer works, leaking into the abstraction of like getting something from a list, a list of things. And we don't count in real, real life, so to speak, we don't count starting at zero. 
It's not natural for humans. Programming languages should be more natural for humans. These are essentially human languages, a way humans interact with computers. So I think zero-based indexing is a very big mistake and leads to probably countless errors. And it's not, I mean, it's not so clever. I think it was like maybe like, hmm, kind of a cutting of corners. We don't need that awareness that computers start with zero when we're programming at this level of abstraction. JavaScript, Python language, stuff like that. So anyway, a little bit of a tangent. But. So now, we already have the Internet Archive identifier. If I just grab that Where is it? here. The cool thing about this Django templating language is even though I'm writing JavaScript here, I can actually interpolate Django stuff into my JavaScript. Mm -hmm. In fact, <laughs> I didn't need to go through all this effort <laughs> to do that, but it's cool. I learned a little bit. It's nice to learn. Yeah, so if we're here for the page number, we'll just do that. And then we don't really need to pass the element in. That's cool and all. So we get the page number. Huh. And ah, it's though ah. <laughs> Kind of give me a little bit of a hassle because I'm using, yeah, because Django, uh, I wonder why the other one didn't give me any hassle here. Declaration statement expected. All right, all right. There we go. So let's do the same thing. We need to pass the archive identifier into each one of them. Yeah, getting a little bit dirty here. But I guess that's what these data properties are for. I'm getting a little bit annoyed by the linting. I like to have these things a little bit nested on a single uh, row or column. Ah, whatever. I'm just doing this weird stuff. Alright, so this should more or less work. So I'll just open the debugger here. Debugger, U G G here, and then make sure those variables are correct. To Mundo. Not a number. Trying to cast it for me, isn't it?
negative two. Should be two. Oh, I need to set the min value to. Ah, I'm clumping up all my <laughs> all my commits. Anyway. So the problem being the data are not coming to the template the way I'm expecting it. I'm expecting them to be in the oh, where are they? Expect that. Mm -hmm. So maybe I've typo today. I'm missing an equal sign. Or... Ah, no, no, no. It's, yeah, I'm using the wrong iterator. Article. There we go. There we go. The article has the PDF page number, whereas the page has the Internet Archive identifier. All right, easy mistake. Fishy there. Must not have saved it previously. All right, good, good. Now our debugger, when I click, we have PDF page number one because I think I'm gonna eliminate that off by one thing and let, let me thank you for a second. Oh, uh, no, no. I can't take that subtract one out because the PDF is actually starting at zero. That's the deal. It does start at zero. Nice. Okay, good. We're almost there. Instead of now, I'm gonna give this iframe an ID so I can get element out by ID. PDF 
appear. And then does attribute work? All right, no. Archive smart enough somehow that it knows to turn the page when you set that attribute. <laughs> it's pretty clever. Let's see if this will work. I took the debugger out. Yes, yeah, so we'll close that out now. Ah, it didn't work. Look at that example a little bit closer, but essentially we can say document uh, get element by ID, right? If I'm typing that correctly, I think I use autocomplete, and the ID is a string. And then you say, well, I think I can just use set attribute right off of that. I can chain that source. Single quotes here for consistency in JavaScript. Heck, let me just test this out in the browser. Browser console. Here. All right, looks good. Yep. And then So that works. Um, I think the challenge here is I'm using the stream approach 
instead of their embed approach. I think I did that so that we could actually specify the page number. Let me just double check if there's a page number attribute. Well, why doesn't this work in the general? All right, so we needed to explicitly tell it page zero, I think, otherwise. It starts off page one, which is strange. Yeah, so we need to put that, this is clue G, oh, I don't know it's clue G, but I might not even need the mode to, uh, but let's see if I can just, less is more, less code is better. It's a little bit opaque. And we do have a two up and then, oh, it might start here. Yeah, it'll work. All right, oh, uh, 320, three hours, 20 minutes. Okay, then. Let's commit this stuff. Now, I got my, my commits a little bit mixed up, didn't I? I'm not going to commit to home. What I've done here is quite a number of changes. Title field. Actually, why don't I just do this?
take out the title and take out the string in the title. Everything else is fine. Yeah. I can do that. I can then have a little bit cleaner command history. Shoot, now they're out of order, aren't they? Oh. Does my model reflect a positive integer field? It should, I mean, let me double check. Actually, no, I haven't sort of committed the file, though, without the... Hmm. Consistency, let's switch this to a positive integer field. Three and a half hours in, we have some substantial progress. I think our uh, deployment timeline is now going to depend a little bit on Wagtail 2.8 release, which is uh, maybe challenging. We'll see how it goes, though. I think there's still a bit of a bit of work to do in any case. So yeah, today we've. Uh, gone through and created archive issues, archive articles, archive article authors as a nested sort of inline fields and the server's not running. So we've got the archive issue here. We have one or more archive articles, several articles, and then authors can be attached to those articles. Uh, it's a little bit kludgy the way the multi-select is working, but that's kind of a wagtail enhancement in progress for wagtail 2.8. Then we went in ahead and created the template with a little bit of JavaScript to handle the page turning. So all in all, eh, pretty good progress. Um, to 
tomorrow I might continue this, uh, add some little more, t uh, maybe nice touches to the UI, the way it displays the table of contents, for example. But overall, this is pretty much working enough for proof of concept to get some feedback from Mary. Okay, well, thanks a lot for hanging out. This has been a CodeBuddies.org live coding session. It's always nice to have people hanging out during the live coding session and chat. We can get off topic and mainly talking about development related stuff. Interpixel, thanks for stopping in. And it's nice talking to you about SQL and Python development. Thanks again, Level 2, for stopping by. I uh, hope to continue collaborating with you on that music creation project. If you're interested in getting involved with some open source projects or learning or teaching people to code, do stop by codebuddies.org. It's a really active community with a lot of diverse interests and backgrounds and skill sets. The codebuddies.org website is also under development. It's an open source platform and they're revising it to um, actually several different technologies. It depends on which one will be the most successful proof of concept uh, at the end of the day, which one will be chosen. All right. Well, thanks again for watching and have a great day.